Hey, Matt Hotour here with Chris Smith from Minute Maid Park in Houston. Getting ready for uh, ALCS Game 3, Red Sox and Astros. Chris, uh, Game 3 obviously in this situation is, uh, is a pretty big, um, pretty big momentum game. What do, you, what do you think for the Red Sox going in? Well, I was just sitting with fellow Mass Live reporter Chris Cotillo, and he was telling me that, that manager Alex Gore has said the goal is to win one game here to get back home and make field advantage. <laughs> and that's been his big thing over the last two days that he's been saying. I don't understand that. They need to get two games there, I think. And, you know, I think they, I think they have a good shot here with Evaldi on the mound against Dallas Geico. Uh, Baldi's pitched really well. He's changed his you know, style of pitching here in the last month. You know, he's gone up in the zone, uh, you know, to counter launch angle. Actually, Alex Spear just had some interesting tweets about it. Uh, so go check those out. But yeah, I mean, he's he's really been good. And if you you know, if you're going up and in to right-handed hitters, as he as he put it, you know, with a hundred mile per hour fastball, you're not going to hit home runs that way. Uh, so you know. Nathan Waldy's really changed himself as a pitcher, and you know he showed it against the Yankees the last couple of games, uh, or the last game he pitched, but the last few games he's pitched against the Yankees overall. And uh, I think it should be an interesting matchup. When he's been on, he's been very on for 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 the Red Sox, and that's been more often than not for the, for the most part. He's excellent right away. He's certainly very good against the uh, Yankees in, in the ALDS. It, it, He's a guy that you'd feel pretty confident going going forward with. Yeah, I think you need to look at the third time through the order with him. That's when it. That's when the damage begins. And so, it's funny. Everybody doesn't talk about the first start of the year that that Nathan Evaldi had against the Yankees, uh, and that was with Tampa Bay. And I think they scored like five runs against him, but it was all in the seventh inning. Right. And so you look at the start that he had here against the Astros earlier in this year. Well, he allowed four runs. Uh, in four of them, four of the runs came on solo home runs, but three of them are all in the sixth. Three of them are in the sixth inning. You know, he had back to back to back solo home runs. So it's the third time in the order. And so if he can get around this order twice, and it can be the fifth or sixth inning. Then you go to the bullpen and you don't let him face yeah, the heart of that Yeah, certainly with the, with the way things have gone. You, if, if the game is if the game is close, you're gonna uh, you're gonna look at him and uh, after that that after the first time a couple times through and say, and if the game is close, you're, you're gonna be turning it over to Brazier, to Matt Barnes, to um, to Joe Kelly at that point. I would think. And you know, Brazier and Barnes have been very good. I think we I think we might see Eduardo Rodriguez. And you know, he hasn't pitched well out of the bullpen in the playoffs so far, but he hasn't really. I mean, he, he hasn't really gotten too much of an opportunity. And I think they need to rely on him if they're gonna go forward here, especially you know. In a day like today, where they're unable to go to Rick Porcillo in the eighth, and they're unable to go to Chris Sale. Well, the Chris Sale is the question that I have is with with Eduardo Rodriguez. Do you use him now, or is he somebody that you've got kind of well, in your back pocket in case Chris Sale is not right for, for for Game Five? That's an interesting question. I guess that that's a good point right there. Um, apparently, Chris Sale is going to throw a bullpen today in the middle of the game try to see what, what he can do if he can go game five, but, you know, I mean, he might not feel good later today. He might not feel good tomorrow morning. So, yeah, you might, actually, that is a val very valid point, and that you might not want to pitch him. But That's part of why it makes tonight such an important game, because if you get a good game out of Evaldi tonight, if you can if you can somehow get a win out of this game, you're, it's a lot less pressure to try to use Chris Sale in game five and you, you could give him a little more time, potentially save him for Game Six if you if 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 you got at least ahead in that situation. Yeah, and um, you know the bullpen has done has surprised me completely. Yeah. Matt Barnes, who had over six ERA in the second half of the season, has been lights out so far. Four and two thirds innings. They are giving up a lot of walks. The bullpen. Um, you know, Brazier and him have given up, I think, seven walks total, but they've also pitched nine scoreless right. eight innings. They've only allowed one run, one hit. Um, you know, and then you look at what Kelly and Heath Emery have done. They've they've mainly pitched behind or with the game tied, but they haven't given. They've only given up one unearned run. Um, they've given up some walks, but I mean, it's been 
you know, they, they pretty much kept, I mean, it's, it's, it's been very surprising to me, actually. I thought the bullpen was going to blow games. <laughs> that seemed like <laughs> that, that was certainly the biggest question mark coming in, and they've made it a weapon so and far. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see if you're, uh, if you're Dave Dombrowski, especially, because, <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there was a lot of pressure on him, having not made a move at the deadline. There was all eyes on that bullpen, and, you know, he would have taken a lot of heat, and he still might take a right. lot of heat if the bullpen doesn't blow uh, if the bullpen does blow. Now, one thing I, I think you have to look at with the bullpen is, is I think we mentioned this on the last video, is, is Craig Kimbrell and his ability, his inability to throw strikes and how I think that that limits him to one inning. I, I just, like, we, I we talked about him all season as a guy that when the postseason begins or even, in, you know, in important parts in the regular season, that he can record more than three outs. I don't know how you can rely on him if he hasn't done it, and he has, you know, shaky control as it is in the role that he has been in for his entire career, and he's used to, how can you expect him to have control and, you know, pitch four or five or six outs? I think that's off the board right now, I do. I, I agree with you, and, and I think... It's actually I think a question it, ask Cora. I think it's, <laughs> it's, an inter board. it's an interesting race, to what's going to happen. Kimbrell finds it and gets himself where he's, where he's throwing strikes, or Kimball blows, Kimball blows up. Whichever of those things happens first is goes a long way in determine, determining what, how the series goes, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what is... I mean, Kimball didn't have great control the whole year. His, his walk rate was up, obviously. I think it was like four point something walks per nine innings this year, up from you know, like one last year. But the year before, it was at five. I don't know if it was because he didn't have a very long spring training because, you know, he was with his daughter, right. obviously, at the back of the hospital in Boston. I don't know if there was contributing factors, that, and also just last year was more of an aberration with him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's the controls just, I mean, it's funny, like, Evan Drillick tweeted out something like, well, if you look at that game the other day, he got the, the, the most unimportant inning, which I would say is the least... The, the lowest leverage in because right. you know I mean Rick um, Barnes, Brazier, Priscilla, they're all in a one-run game, and then and then Kimbrel comes in in a three-run game in the ninth. But do you actually want Kimbrel in a one-run game right now? I don't know. He's, it's he's fair, scary it's, right it's a, now. It is. It's a. It's a. He's a guy that you have to think about if you're bringing him in, having somebody ready to back him up if, he, if his control is not there. And I think that if you're getting to say game seven of the ALCS. And Rick Priscilla's he pitches game um, four tomorrow. And he's not going to pitch again this series. If you're getting to game seven of the ALCS, if you have Rick Priscilla and in the eighth inning as the setup man, right. you might want to bring him out for the ninth inning and have him record six outs. Depending on what Kimball does between now and then, that's that, that, that's, that'll be certainly interesting to see. I the mean, guy that no one's that, talking though, about is Price. We, you could potentially yeah, use Price for I mean, use Price the same way you, you've used Porcello. I mean, yeah. He didn't pitch that many, throw that many pitches or that many innings. Yeah. He's a guy that, that uh, that's at least an option depending on, on circumstances. Because if you look at it back in the day, uh, I'm, not, I'm forgetting which year because the San Francisco Giants have been to you know, right. three World Series or whatever, but Bumgarner, you know, I think it was it two or I think he had the final two two innings of the game seven of the. He did. I'm not sure the year either, but okay. you're right. And that was like the day after he started a game, which you're not going to see Sale or anybody do that because Sale's just not healthy right now to do that. Sure. But Priscilla is definitely an option to do that if he's pitching game four. Put him out for the final. I would trust him over over Kimber right now. Well, a lot of baseball between now and then, and we'll have all of that <laughs> ready. Ready. For, I'm ready for game for you. seven. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm ready for. So, have hey, wait a minute. Can we talk about the one last thing? Absolutely. The matchups today with with uh, uh, Eduardo Nunez and Devers. What do you think about it? Uh, I, I wrote. I have a story that, that's up today on on Devers and how he's been a guy that in pressure moments has been has been pretty good. Nunez has not had a great series. I, I, I would have liked to have seen, seen Devers in the game today. Okay, so with, with, you know, there's three things that I look at with, with Nunez um, and Devers and all this so, so, uh, situation. Uh, Keuchel has even splits, all right? Lefties and righties right. are hitting, you know, 7-13 or whatever, OPS, right around the same OPS against him. So it's, you know, it's a he, wash. Devers would be fine. It, you know, as a left-handed hitter against him. He's also a low ball hitter. He's, he crushes balls inside low. Keigel's a sinker baller. 
And the other thing is, uh, Nunez is reverse splits this year. He's actually 50%, uh, his OPS is 50%, uh, 50 points lower against left-handers. So now we're going to the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to let you go on that one so we're not, uh, so we're not disrespecting you, so forth. So, and you, uh, worth noting? Uh, Alex and uh, Francisco, Tom Westerholm, we come live from, from the Boston Guard for Facebook Live for tonight's Celtics opener as well. So be sure to check that out. But you can check out Chris on Twitter at Smitty on MLB and Matt on Twitter. I'm at MattVotor424. See you during the game.